pleasure to have all of you this morning and i would like to start by welcoming my eminent panelists for today's discussion starting with amit nagpal is the director of development for hyatt hotels amit welcome you on board can you say hi to all the audience please hi thank you thanks amit thank you very thank much you. atul jain is the chief operating officer for best western hotels and he is uh, taking care of the india sri lanka and bangladesh atul can i have your good morning guys Great. thanks atul Mr. Balji is the chairman and managing director for Royal Orchid Hotels. It's a listed entity, and it's one of the most prominent domestic brands in the country. They have 55 plus hotels. Mr. Balji, welcome you on board. Thanks, uh, Balvinder. He's heading, uh, taking care of the development for Accor Hotels in India. Balvinder, thanks a lot for your presence. Hi, everyone. Anika, thanks, Balvinder. Hi, Anika. She's uh, taking care of the direct development for Wyndham Hotels and Resorts for uh, Ima region. And uh, thanks a lot, Anika, for your presence. And let's hope for a very meaningful discussion in the interest of the hotel owners and the industry professionals. Thank you for your presence, all of you. Anika, I would like to start with you. Franchise is a you know, big word when it comes globally. We have a good uh, you know, presence of franchise transactions in the Western world. But when it's come to India, less than 10% of the market share is with the franchise in organized inventory. Okay. Why so? Question number one. And second, what are you bringing on the table as a franchisee brand for the hotel owners? Okay, uh, thank you, Nandi. Um, so first of all, I would like to uh, throw some numbers. Uh, so you know, at Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, we are globally nine thousand three hundred hotels. Ninety-five percent of our portfolio is franchise. So we are undoubtedly the largest hotel franchises in the world. In India, if I have to cite numbers, we have got seventy-five hotels out of which. Uh, 48 are operational and 100% of our portfolio is franchise. Uh, in the last five years, we have quadrupled our portfolio and I feel uh, this is primarily owing to the strategic advantage that we enjoy in terms of being a, being a leading franchise player in India right from the mid-market to the upscale and upper upscale segment, which is uh, probably a unique uh, value proposition that we bring to the table. Uh, coming to your second question on um, what exactly does a franchise brand bring on the table? Well, it's an entire 360 degree gamut of uh, services that we are talking about. And the whole uh, life cycle of hotel development and operation starts from when we get a project. Uh, so whether it's an operating hotel or a new construction, it is first reviewed against uh, international fire life safety standards, which are very, very sacred to us. Thereafter, it is reviewed against one of the 20 brands uh, and a suitable brand is advocated for the said project, whether it's a Wyndham or a Ramada or a Howard Johnson or a Days and so on. Uh, we handhold the entire design development process uh, at key milestones, concepts, schematic, design development, mock-up, pre-opening and so on. Organize pre-opening training for the staff and general manager and HODs. Uh, get the system live on our uh, uh, on our portals in terms of brand.com, in terms of OTAs, in terms of GDS, GDS and so on. And thereafter, once the hotel is operational, uh, a multitude of operational support services are provided, right from uh, brand standard compliance to quality audit, to training, to Wyndham Rewards loyalty program support, sales and marketing, uh, and the works. So, so this is how we bring uh, the support to our franchisee hotel owners. Thanks, Anika. Amit, coming to you, uh, what's the current state of franchising in India, in Indian hospitality context? And why do you think that uh, we are not as, uh, the franchisee transactions are not as relevant to our Indian hotel industry as it is for the Western world? What's sort of the reason what you feel so? See, I, I, my, uh, I think there are quite a few reasons. Uh, if you try to, uh, Let's try to dissect this in two scenarios. One scenario is where, uh, let's say, the owner is uh, is having a third-party management company, and he's he's built a hotel. Now, what has happened in India is that uh, when you start to look at the fee, uh, generally speaking, the management fee uh, with the brand it adds up vis-a-vis. Uh, -vis with a third party operator and a franchise from a brand, uh, management fee tends to be more competitive uh, in, in the current scenario. And uh, of course, the owner has, uh, these brands have much stronger 
uh, infrastructure in place and support system in place. So generally, owners tend to then go ahead with the uh, with the management company, uh, with, with the operator directly with the brand uh, as as an operator of the hotel as well. So that's that's one scenario. Second scenario is let's say if the uh, if the hotel owner is managing on his own. Now, what happens in that is that uh, a lot of uh, Indian owners they are first time owners, uh, and they are owners of single or dual assets. So the challenge is that they do not have strong infrastructure in place, uh, a strong leadership team in place, which is over and above the uh, the hotel level. So because of which uh, the challenge happens is with a brand like like Hyatt, we want those things in place. If that is not there, then uh, it's very difficult for me to offer a franchise uh, for, for that particular asset. Uh, so I think these are the if you add these up, and I think these are the primary reasons because of which we haven't we're still in a nascent stage, and I'm hoping that we do get hotel owners who build hospitality as their vertical within their group, uh, so that they, they and because of that they will grow the infrastructure. They will make sure they have strong leadership team. They'll make sure they have strong sales and marketing setups, and then they will be able to easily attract bigger brands, all kinds of brands, in fact, uh, and we'll be able to then um, uh, owner manage and franchise with the brands, which will be a pretty win-win situation. How's your portfolio split at this point of time? How many franchisees uh, you have in India? So uh, in our case, we have 33 operational hotels in India, and only two are franchised. And they're franchised with one company uh, that has got, uh, that uh, owns other four Hyatt hotels, uh, which are managed by Hyatt, and two uh, are again owned by them, but they are the ones who manage it. Plus, they also have they own total 24 hotels globally, more than 2,000 rooms. So they have a pretty strong setup. And uh, we recently signed up um, a Hyatt Regency in Navi Mumbai with K Rohedar Group. Again, uh, uh, again an owner with with very uh, large asset portfolio. And a very strong uh, uh, leadership team there, and and a strong infrastructure there as well. So for the, for us, that's very critical. And how's the development pipeline for franchise transaction looking for you? Uh, as a so if you, uh, so, uh, uh, our current portfolio of operational hotels, it's around five six percent is, is franchise. I would say in pipeline, I would say around ten odd percent is what we'll be looking at, uh, not more than that. So it is gradually growing. We are also evolving with that, and I think as we move along, it will get better uh, uh, with, with more and getting more and more uh, owners uh, with, with strong uh, leadership team and infrastructure in place. Sure, Mr. Balti, do you think the absence of third-party operation management companies is one of the reasons why franchise transactions market share is very limited in our country at this point of time? Well, I just view our journey of. Uh, Franchise ourselves. See, we were uh, franchising, we took a master license of the Mada Hotel about 12 years back. And so we wanted to go into the franchise uh, model. And uh, actually, our uh, you know, dealing with the Mada showed us why franchise don't work and what needs to do uh, to be done to make it work. That was when we started. And there are today 60 hotels. Out of 60 hotels, uh, 12 are franchised, 12 are, uh, are owned, and 26 are managed. So, franchising to go into two things and not very comfortable for the four years. But we understood what franchise uh, uh, want. If they want to put RSU support. So, which we had, because we managed to tell we had others. They want them to so can you come closer to the mic, please? Your voice is coming. Uh, Hello. Yeah, can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. please go. We realize that the franchisees require much more support in India than they probably require abroad. So, uh, franchisees will reach RSO support. Is it? 
to say that you are on an international platform does not mean very much unless the market is international. I mean, most of the places where you are in tier two or tier three city, your international candidate is very little. So you are not going to get uh, very much business from US, UK, uh, Europe, and all that. But you will have to be on that platform unless your productivity will be very low. Right? It's good to have a good brand, fine, great, but the productivity will be very low. So RSO produce a lot of business for our hotel, uh, and which we have a very strong RSO. And we have a very strong platform like salesforce.com. We get out and we are weekly calls. We really get out of people to produce. Besides, of course, being on online marketing and website and all that. But website is getting killed by a lot of these uh, OTS coming in. We have to understand that. You know, so OTS will play a major part in, in the whole thing. But then manpower. Now, you see, uh, what, is, what all is the difference between management and franchise? A franchise does not mean that you give him the name, you give him this thing and let it spend for itself. Because he requires a lot more handholding. An Indian owner is very, very egoistic. He says that I run a factory, I can run a hotel, as there is no difficulty. So he is very, very egoistic. He, he wants his ego to comfort. So he says, I will run the hotel. But if you run the hotel, it means you are providing the various support. If the franchise has to be successful. Which we realize that is training, and so the four that because training we have a college of hotel management, we have now we have online training going on for all the people. So we have a very sophisticated college of hotel management which is running for the last 25 years. So we have support there, and of course, on other things, we have everything available on Alaka. Suppose the guy wants training to be done, our people go there at a short notice, train people, and come back. You are Quality management. Uh, we, we do get QMS uh, reports regularly and we tell the owner that this is the problem you have and you need the support so, so we can send our people and people go and fix it up. We do mystery audits of the hotel. So we do mystery audits and if they find there's a problem, now we made it compulsory in our franchise that they have to do one or two mystery audits per, uh, per year. So And after the audit, they have to actually be. Uh, you know, be prepared for the training and they can't say no, we can't, we, we don't want, want training at all. So it is required there. So I think we have tried to, uh, you know, give all that, uh, you know, a management company offer, uh, he, that ego of him to satisfy people that he is managing the hotel, but, uh, uh, you know, they are actually not managing. But in a certain cases, our experience has been exceedingly good. Because a guy has returned from Switzerland after training, and he is no hotel management, and he is very enthusiastic. His son is very enthusiastic about running the hotel. Uh, can we do a better job? No, we can't. We can provide it. So I've had some owners who are very educated, hungry, but they required our distribution. So, so they've taken us, and I think the partnership was both exceedingly well. Of course, there have been cases where uh, we've had a uh, lot of interference from owners because they are the franchise, we can't do anything about it. Now we're going one more step of franchise. We're insisting that we have a general manager, so he reports to us, and we're telling the owners that look here, there should be only one particular person who is from the owner's side. Otherwise, you have all the chachas and the vadijas and everybody coming to the hotel and telling the DM, Are you come here, this is not right, that is not right. So, it is, it is a tough thing, but I think I think we have cracked it. So, we got now 12 hotels, now we got brands in terms of uh, Regenta Central, which is the four-star brand, we have Regenta Place, which is the three-star brand, in fact, our mother has been converted to Regenta Place, then we have a budget brand also, which is Regenta Inn. And of course, we are reviving our old brand, Peppermint, which has come to run. We are reviving that for the budget brand. So I think we are going to be pursuing um, franchising also, um, looking at uh, this whole market scenario.
Thanks, Mr. Balji. Uh, Atul, coming to you, what's the criteria for you when you do a owner selection for you, in your case for the best Western franchise? You know, first of all, I would like to say that we have uh, 14 brands all together in the best Western portfolio. It's just not only the best Western. Yes, Best Western was the primary brand and we grew in America, the largest portfolio, number of hotels is Best Western. But after that, Best Western introduced many more brands in the last couple of years. So we have brands in the economy range, we have brands in the budget range, then mid-scale, then upper mid-scale and upper upper scale. So depending upon the location, depending upon the size of the hotel and the facilities, then we advise the owners that this is the best brand for you keeping in mind the location, keeping in mind the market scenario and the demands. And when we choose the order, we'll have to see that uh, what is his need? Is it a it is a uh, room-based hotel or is it a uh, F&B uh, driven hotel? So it's a mix of hotels. What we have seen is most of the hotels are given 50-50% revenues between room and the F&B. So we, depending upon that, we choose and we advise the owner on the brand what they, what is best for them. Thanks. Anika, you're running 48 plus uh, hotels are right now under the Amada and your other brands' flags. What do you think? Uh, owners actually interfere in day-to-day -day operation or it's the GM who finally take calls? What's your experience with the in these such transactions? As Mr. Balji was saying that uh, sometimes owners interfere a lot in his experiences. How's the Amada experience in this context? So first of all, Anandi, I would like to say one thing that when, when you're choosing franchise, one needs to understand the difference between what you know, what you want and what you actually need. Okay. So, uh, you know, as Mr. Balji said, probably franchise with an international brand was not his cup of tea at that point in time. However, there, there could be the right and ideal combination of a particular project and owner who needs either an Indian franchise or an Indian management contract or a foreign uh, international franchise or an international management contract. So it the variables completely collude to one single decision-making aspect, right? So coming now to the question on day-to-day -day interference, as you say, I wouldn't like to call that interference. I would like to call that involvement. Um, our experience is that once we help the owner appoint the right general manager, the GM is practically the captain of the ship who brings in his entire entourage of HODs on board and he drives them to deliver the owner's financial vision and the brand standards at the hotel. Once that is achieved, there is no compelling reason or requirement for an owner to be involved on a day-to-day -day basis should he not wish to. Now, if he wishes to, that's a different matter. But from a professional requirement point of view, it's not really compelling, right? Um, I would also like to add by saying that only probably 8 to 10% of our entire portfolio has owners involved on a day-to-day -day basis. Everybody else has less left uh, the operations to a set of professionals, as I have just described to you. The diaspora of our owners ranges from hardcore hoteliers to real estate developers, uh, to, you know, business interests in being uh, spices or textiles or uh, liquor or, uh, you know, F&B business, banqueting. So I wouldn't say that the owner needs to be involved on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks, Erika. Balvinder, coming to you, uh, you know, Accord has a strong SOPs like any other international brand. And how you make sure that your franchisee actually follow those SOPs? What are the mechanisms which you follow to keep a track on that? So the at the end, consumer experience doesn't get compromised because for a consumer, it's a car hotel. It's not a franchise or management. That's a in-house arrangement between the owner and operator or a brand. Thank you, Andy. So before I get on to that, Andy, let me just take a step back. Can you can just come closer to my place? Is it better? I'm sorry. I was having issues with my uh, phone. That's the reason I was going out. Okay, before I take you, to, uh, you know, before I answer that query, uh, let me just take you back. See, according internationally, we operate more than 5,000 plus hotels. And when you look at a global portfolio, from a global portfolio perspective, more than or almost 50% of these hotels are franchised. Now, to answer and to circle back the discussion that we were having before, so for us, it is by design in India. Like Mr. Balji said, see, at the end of the day, nobody is looking at just a name on top of it. So I think for record, uh, the decision has been, we wanted to put up system and processes in place through management contracts, our own investment. So we are totally ready 
we have the right support for all the things that Mr. Balji said. What a owner needs, be it a regional sales office, be it a uh, distribution ecosystem, all that is in place. So for us, it's by design. And we currently own, uh, sorry, we currently operate two franchise operations in India, which are doing pretty well. Now, how do we take control of them? Of course, uh, since it is franchise is new for us, we've been into it for the last two, two and a half years. And you know, we took a break. We kept, did not keep on signing the franchise contract. So our thought process was to learn from our franchise experience in India, which so far, frankly speaking, has been pretty good. How do we do as we look at yearly audits? You have a health and hygiene audit, you have a brand safety audit, you have a, a loyalty program audit, and we have an in-house audit. Because like you rightly said, for me as a consumer, when I walk into a hotel, it is an Accor brand. And that is one of the reasons that we were not very we were not we did not go all out for franchising we wanted to get a system right so that not only we can support the owner but we can also support the consumer and make sure they get consistent experience in a nutshell the regular audits that we do the alignment that we are able to do of these franchisee hotel along with the management hotels wherein the senior gm is always there or and, and or given our area network coverage we have multiple hotels in the location. I mean, generally have an area manager, which is there for all support and check and balances. Thanks, Balwinder. Amit, coming back to you, uh, you know, in a management contract, operators set up the budget in advance for a whole financial year, and the owner has signed off together with the operator. And if there is uh, any difference, then obviously operator owner is going to have a difficult conversation if the deficit side is there. Okay. Now, in the franchise, how much involvement as a brand you have when it comes to the financial performance, setting up the budgets and the tracking the budgets and delivery of the promise, what the property, the GM made at the property. So, uh, brand has uh, has limited uh, involvement in that, uh, especially in the, in the setting of the budget. Uh, that's what I'm particularly talking about, uh, because the hotel is being managed by uh, either the third party operator or by the owner. So they are the ones who prepare the budget and if uh, we, we definitely give them uh, budget guidelines uh, as far as what expenses they would be looking at from the uh, from the brand side and uh, and then based on that they create their own budget and if they would like us to uh, review the budget and have a discussion on that we more than welcome that and uh, what's very important for us is uh, we need to create a really good sales and marketing program because we need to understand how they would go ahead and manage these properties, uh, man manage the sales and marketing, uh, and try and earn revenue for, uh, for these assets. So that's very critical for us. We get involved in that a, a lot more. Uh, so, so that's what we're looking at. And uh, as far as uh, 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 any other uh, uh, involvement is concerned, I think uh, our team is there to support them as far as the revenue management is concerned or uh, as far as other trainings, ID trainings and those things are concerned. So as and when they require that, we definitely provide them that kind of support. So these services are on ask basis or these are mandatory in franchise arrangement? Uh, which which particular service you're talking like about? Like you ID support whenever they ask for, we are always there to support them or the sales and marketing distribution. See, see, IT, so initially, of course, the training happens. Now, what's very important for us is uh, any system that is uh, that has got uh, anything to do with the guest, that we keep exactly the same as our managed hotels. So uh, like your opera, which is a property management system uh, and revenue management system, which we have pre or sales and marketing system. So these systems remain exactly the same. Uh, so that when a guest goes from one property to the other, his, ex his or her experience uh, is, is very similar. So. Uh, but then there are uh, systems like uh, HR or finance. So these, they have the liberty to choose their own systems, uh, the, the operator. So we have a set of core system for which we do provide all services and the training as well. And then there are non-core ones, uh, which they, they're open there. If they would like to have very similar system as we have, we are actually happier because uh, something like Hyperion, which is our financial system. Uh, the kind of uh, uh, 
it, it makes your uh, operation very efficient uh, from financing point of view. So even when they, when you're doing budgeting, it's much easier for you to put in numbers and it throws you a lot of different scenarios that you can look at. So it makes your life much easier that way. But again, it's not mandatory from our end. Thanks, Amit. Mr. Balji, uh, you wear both the hat. Uh, you are an owner also and you run a brand also. Now, when a franchisee uh, arrangement transaction is there with you, how your team make sure that asset is getting the best return, whatever the potential is available considering the market dynamics on the air occupancy, but that asset remains the best uh, in the concept, in the performance cycle? Today, there are indicators available like SDR and all that, which is value. Well, because the owner will always be unhappy, no matter how uh, well you perform. He'll always be unhappy and say, no, you could have done better. You know, that's our typical psychology. As I think we have even uh, you know, exceeded the budget. Uh, so they say, no, 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 no. But uh, you know, this other hotel is doing much because RSQs are performing much better. There's some vague information. See, ultimately, the overall uh, you know, target what is there? Of course, in franchise, you are not totally responsible for the target because a large portion of the money comes from FNB. A lot of people are saying a lot of business is FNB and which may be counted, may not be counted, which we are not concerned with. So, a lot of owners are interested in franchise because then they can run their balance sheet, they can run their expense account, they can run everything on their own. So, I think that is one thing which I have found that a lot of owners are interested in. Venture because randomly because of that reason, right? So they, their accounts are not public, their accounts are their own. They can put their personal account into that, they can take cash, they are gone. But hotel, like the hotel guests are accounted for, and there, as uh, pointed out by other panelists, also, we are not responsible for achieving any budgets. Of course, we help them, we guide them, but the owners is there. No. That is what the principal thing is as far as franchise is concerned. Otherwise, we tell them that if you are so particular, we give us the money. So we are giving them money and uh, because the franchise, we give them an option. And I've had a lot of cases where discussions starting with the franchise, they ended up in money. A lot of discussions where started out with the management ended up in the franchise. So I find that in the in my discussion, I find that I am keeping on keeping on the every damn thing. I think a lot of things they do. A franchise, you will be better off. And, uh, and you know uh, very well, you transacted a couple of deals with us, and then you said thank you very much. <laughs> okay. uh, I hope that is on like a note only. <laughs> okay, Atalji, coming to you, uh, you know, what type of uh, business you are giving to your uh, hotel owners from your road? Because Best Business is fully a franchise, uh, largely is a franchise driven uh, company in the country. So how much business is actually coming from your RSOs or your other distribution channels to the hotel owners? Okay. First of all, let me clarify that uh, Best Business in India is not a purely a franchisee company. Our 45% portfolio is a managed properties. And yes, uh, globally we are 99% hotels are, are franchise. But in India, we are managing the hotels. So since we also look after the Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh hotels are all franchisee, uh, barring the one. Uh, we have recently opened our office in Bangladesh, and through that office, uh, we would be providing our management and the sales and other services. When it uh, comes to the support and the, and the delivery to the hotels, uh, you know, the delivery uh, delivery goes through the various channels. So one is that you know, 24/7 call center we have, uh, which works 24/7 in, in India. And apart from this, we have RSLs based at Delhi, uh, Bangalore, Mumbai, and uh, Punjab. So these RSLs contribute and uh, look at the uh, local negotiated rate contracts and the agreements uh, with the clients. And apart from that, we have a very, very strong uh, uh, RFP uh, system for 500 Fortune companies, uh, through which the, the, the clients, the hotels sign up and they get direct business with that. And uh, we have signed up a direct connect with OTS like Expedia and Make My Trip and Go Abibo. And at a, at a reduced commission, so thereby the owner is directly getting the benefit of the reduced uh, commission that uh, goes to their account. And apart from that, uh, Best Fisher has 68 uh, global offices, and uh, those global offices are available for support to any hotel worldwide, 4,500 hotels, uh, in terms of the contract signing, in terms of arranging and finalizing the deal. And uh, the most important aspect is our loyalty program. 
uh, Best Western has uh, a just a loyalty program having 45 million members worldwide. In America, the program is contributing about 40% of the revenue. In India, as of the uh, February figures uh, till day, uh, the contribution from the loyalty program was 16%. We see that the contribution from this program is going to about 25% in the future years to come. So as you know, uh, we are providing franchising and the management services, but we don't differentiate between a franchise owner and a management owner. Yes, in a management contract, we provide extended services, which owner always understand that. But as far as the sales, marketing, quality assurance are concerned, uh, they are equal for whether a property is a franchise or a managed. We don't make Thanks a distinction between that. Thank you. Thank you. But with the how the distribution marketing thing works for you for your franchise owners? Uh, in terms of RFPs, OT commissions, whatever advantages actually they are taking with your network. So, Mandy, even for us, and I guess that's pretty much the same for each and every hotel operator. So the only difference between a managed and a franchise operation is the first part, wherein we, do, in the management contract, we are doing an active management of day-to-day -day operations. We're responsible for budgets, everything else. However, in the franchise, it's the other way around. We are more on a reactive support basis. You need a help, we give you that help. But as far as the sales marketing distribution is concerned, that's absolutely the same whether it's a franchise or a management contract. Like I said, you know, for a consumer doesn't know whether it's a management or a franchise. Similarly, the people who are working in the hotel should not get a feeling that you know they're working with the franchise or a management opportunity. They get all the sales and marketing distribution absolutely to the last team. Well, with the one more question, uh, like typically on franchise, you charge the fees on the room revenue. Okay. Uh, Is that so, so far, yes. But, you know, again, like I said, you know, we, we're building on our franchise platform for, for India. Now, you have to look at each and every hotel separately and look at what are the different streams of revenue down there. At the end of the day, I'll be honest in saying there's a certain amount of fees that we are looking at. Uh, if it, a hotel is going to have 40% of rooms and 60% of f &B, and you know you can positively impact that, you would want a buy in that. So the idea, Nandi, for me is it's it's mutual. Like before the panel, we were discussing hotel management or franchisee agreement are long-term relationship. You need to work and find solution, which is a win-win for both of us. And looking at this, we will be flexible to adapt our models. Thanks, Mervinder. Anika, coming to you, fire life safety is one of the major concerns when it comes to convergent transactions in the country. Because uh, there are a lot of challenges doing convergent. It has its own limitations when you have to adapt a lot of as per the international norms. Whereas maybe you have a fire NFC as per the local body authorities guidelines. So how to tackle that type of problem? So in your convergent transaction, are you facing these problems? You might have to leave a transaction because they're not able to comply the FLS international standards or there's a way to make this work? So Nandi Vardhan, for us, uh, fire life safety is the holy grail. Uh, we will not hesitate to walk away from a transaction if it is not compliant as per our fire life safety standards. We follow the international uh, code, uh, NFPA. Um, but the good news is that NBC 2016 is largely aligned to the international code uh, that is mostly followed by uh, international companies. So from, from, from that perspective, uh, we are more sorted today than we were probably uh, six, seven years ago. Uh, having said that, um, there are several transactions where we've converted a standalone hotel or another branded hotel into our system with the alignment of fire life safety measures as per our requirements. And I think your organization has uh, run a couple of deals for us on that front, something like Jaipur, for example. So, um, so it's not a it's not a humongous challenge, uh, but I would say that it needs effort and it needs attention. And I would like to say that the reason a brand advocates fire life safety compliance is also in the right interest of the owner, because uh, the whole insurance ecosystem is fulcrum on your uh, compliance with fire life safety standards. So, if a hotel has uh, an asset insurance and you're not fire life safety compliant then definitely there is a there is a very dangerous gap over there. And also looking at the macroeconomic scenario of India and the, the recent uh, uh, you know, incidents that we have seen, 
it is in the interest of both the brand and the owner to be completely fire life safety compliant. So when it comes to a brand evaluation, uh, there are two aspects. First, checkbox is definitely F FLS, irrespective of which brand we are talking about, whether it's based to Wyndham or trademark collection. Uh, then comes the brand alignment. However, for a soft brand like trademark collection by Wyndham, which is largely open for uh, conversion opportunities and trading hotels, uh, there the single most important aspect is FLS alignment. Um, you know, good sense of interior aesthetics and a certain uh, uh, threshold trip advisor rating. So that's where we we tweak our uh, evaluation technical evaluation model. Uh, a little bit. Irrespective of that, FLS continues to be single most important uh, evaluation criteria for us. Thanks, Anika. Amit, what do you think? Uh, the franchise is a good or viable option only for the hotels which are have a limited inventory, like 100, 120 rooms, because probably uh, owners can ha handle that uh, more efficiently. Whereas when the inventory increases more than 250 rooms, it's better to be on a management contract. What's your views on that? So uh, I, I tend to agree with that, that if you have a uh, uh, hotel with a uh, smaller inventory, let's say 100 or sub 100, uh, uh, it, is, it is a good idea to look at, uh, at franchise. Uh, again, that's an option if they're looking at, but again, as I mentioned earlier, what's very important is that you have uh, the right leadership team and the right infrastructure in place to, to do that. Um, because there is, there is um, of course, we can debate it, but there is a common notion that uh, uh, that brands generally have uh, higher costs as far as benefits are concerned. Uh, so, uh, although we can debate it, but uh, we are also managing hundred odd room properties as well right now. Even hundred room hired places, a couple of them that we're managing, and we are successfully managing them. So, uh, but if the owner thinks that there is an opportunity there, uh, they have the right infrastructure, they can definitely look at for smaller assets. As far as bigger assets are concerned, uh, they are much more complex. Um, so I would definitely advise that go with the management company, uh, uh, with the operator, with the brand, because they have, uh, they have, they, they have uh, really good expertise. We've been managing hotels for the last six years around the globe last 32 years in India. So we, we understand the market really well. We are really strong in food and beverage because with these large properties, you tend to have larger f and component as well. So uh, we understand that really well, both from a uh, restaurant as well as uh, events point of view. And we know how to how to market them really well and, and get the revenue and provide the right experience to the, to the, to the guests. So uh, I, I would definitely agree to uh, what you said. Thanks, Anand. Thanks for your inputs. Balvinder, coming to you. Uh, for a, let's say, 100 to 120 room conversion, because quite a few such hotels are available right now in the market for the conversion. What do you think? ROI for the owner will be better in a franchise arrangement or a management contract? Uh, and it's a difficult question here at times, and it also depends on the location that you are in. For example, if you are in a key metro location wherein the distribution is ready to pump in a lot of support, uh, you know, it can be, it can work both ways. So. I would agree more with you know what Amit said right now. See, there's a, there's a perceived notion that uh, management cost increases, with, uh, you know, the cost of hotel operation increases in management contract. Now, uh, if you were to take that out of for a bit, it is what is that you're getting in return when you're doing a management versus franchise. So that's the key. Otherwise, from a ROI perspective, if there's an owner who is uh, essentially a large builder, he doesn't have time to run and manage the day-to-day -day operation of franchise. Trust me, a management uh, contract ROI would be better. On the other hand, if you know I'm a I'm the Swiss guy that Mr. Balji talked about. I've done my hotel school, have come back, and my father was running a hotel. I could, with the franchise, get a better ROI. Nani, I would like to step in here. Um, so you know, we we have uh, we have several examples in our portfolio where you know we are franchising 172 key property or 160 key property or 150 or 135, and even a 60 key property. You know, so I, I think uh, the times have evolved, and uh, it's not as easy a decision making criteria as it used to be. Okay, higher inventory management contract, lower inventory franchise. It's not no longer that easy. There are a few things that one needs to consider. 
the first is the evolution uh, of the hotel owning company where is it in its uh, status of evolution as a hotel owner right the second is the location the third is the business mix as atul also very rightly pointed out so for example if there is a hotel which has a considerable amount of fnb and wellness and we all know that uh, franchise fee is largely uh, you know positioned around gross room revenue and marginally around fnb revenue it may make roi sense for the owner to go for a franchise arrangement because there he would be parting with a lesser component of uh, uh, you know franchise fee versus management fee so every opportunity will need to be looked at in a very nuanced manner there is no uh, generic solution it has to be a custom fit for every deal for every opportunity and that's why as uh, you know as custodians of development it is up to us to rightfully advise an owner you know so that's why that line that i said what you know what you want and what you need there is a big difference now an owner may come to me saying that you know he wants franchise but maybe my advice may be that you should go for manage or vice versa you know so i think we as developers need to play that uh, uh, that role that responsible role of rightfully advising an owner which arrangement suits him i would i would like to add that sure. uh, uh, so if if the owner has the wherewithal they have the right team in place and they can do justice to and they can extract the maximum out of the system that are already provided because the systems are the same whether it's a managed property or it's a, it's a franchise property so if they can extract the maximum out of it yes why not but they need to have the right team in place to do that because it shouldn't happen let's say uh, there has to be a leadership team above the hotel level and a strong one because tomorrow let's say the gm and sales people both of them decide to leave so you need to make sure you can handle that situation because brands they are they are quite wide and they have multiple hotels they can easily handle these kind of situations so you want to make sure that these kind of situations if they arise you're able to do it and you can extract the maximum out of uh, uh, out of the system that any brand is offering Let me just add on, if, if I may, Mr. Balaji, please go ahead. No, no, no please, Balender, you just say. Right. Yeah. Part of the worries which uh, owners always have that when they tie up with a brand, our costs are going to go up. The GM first question he asks, "Hey, how much do we pay your GM?" It's a really big cause of concern for them because they feel that the GM will get more money out of their family, and whereas he feels that he can come closer to the mic, please. Hello. Hello. Come closer to the mic. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah. yeah. One of the concerns which uh, I've seen in franchise hotels is that people feel that the cost of the GM and is very very high. We recommend somebody. So to counter that, what we've done now is that in this uh, lockdown period, we have created a large number of our HOT. The management development program and a large number of HOD have been trained to take position as general managers. So now we have got a whole lineup of general managers who know our system, who who can be at a much lower level salary than what we can get from the market and give to our new uh, franchise or managed property. So that is the value proposition which we are providing. So we have taken uh, this uh, period. We have taken advantage of that by running this program. We have done also a program of multi skilling. So all the hotels, because multi skilling is somehow because of the you know dignity of labour, a receptionist will not clean the lobby, and you know vice versa. So we have made people do that in the last uh, three months, and we have trained a lot of people in multi skilling. So people have now got trained across the thing. What are the foreign foreign chains uh, do abroad? But India has not been very successful. So I think this is an opportunity where we meet this work. So we will be able to work at a much lower staff ratio than we were able to do earlier. Another thing what we have done is now loyalty program. We are shifting all our PMS into uh, cloud based, so that we have a very strong loyalty program. Place. We already have our pool at fifty thousand loyalty members across the country. So that between loyalty and RSOs, 
we are able to deliver at least 30 to 60 percent of the business of the hotel. So this is a counter to uh, you know okay uh, uh, bigger chains from abroad. They have got huge nights, but then within the country be able to deliver deliver that. So that's the value proposition which we are doing. Yes, um, uh, we are also having reduced commission uh, from make my trip and all that, which is passed on to the owner. So whatever he pays us, he gets some benefit out of that. Definitely, there is a benefit. And as we go further, we are negotiating. As we are getting bigger, these uh, OTs are also getting giving us better and better commission. And hopefully, we should also get the commission which the big boys are getting. Can you just so what's the staff ratio right now you are targeting? That one? You are with this multi-tasking uh, uh, training program which you are running. What's the target staff ratio right now for your system? It's a good question, but it varies from hotel to hotel. Like for example, in Royal Orchid Hotel, which is a five-star, 200-room hotel, we need to run with 350 people. Now our target is after this COVID, when we come to normal situation, we will not cross 200 people. So that is what uh, we, are, we are trying to do now. And uh, so uh, one is to one will be the uh, ratio. But of course, you have a smaller hotel, like we have a, a 100 year old heritage property in Mysore Metropole Hotel. This is a 30 room hotel. Okay. So there you will have to have, we were having 25 people working there, now you'll have 60 people. But in an SOP component also, and you know, below a certain number you can't do. But HOD is what used to have a battery or MCOD, they all gone. So now there will be a GM and there will be probably two people, one person will be front office and housekeeping, taking care of the accounts, below will take care of IT as well as store. So all that has been done, the number of people will get reduced. But there is no one formula for all this, the size of the hotel, which market that it is in, what, uh, what it is catering to. But there is a substantial, I would say there will be a 30% uh, reduction in, in salaries. Which is going to happen, uh, which already happened. But when we go to October onward, there will be a feeling October or January when the business returns, we feel there will be a 30% saving in the salary. Palvinder, you want to say something? You was. Uh... No, and then all the whether uh, it's management or a franchise. Come closer to my face. Is it better now? So Nandi, all that I was trying to do was build on what Amit and Anika said. Uh, the decision in terms of uh, for an owner, what is right, management or franchise. So when you look at a franchise, you need to understand what is the why of the owner. Uh, if the owner is saying that, okay, he's going to save three, four percentage because between management and uh, franchise, that may not be the best decision to start with. On the other hand, you may have owners, and in fact, I've signed one, uh, starting of this year, wherein when you walk into this guy's office, uh, you, you go and look at his back office of his existing hotels and you know that you're giving somebody, you know, you're making someone a custodian of your brand who can take care of it. So that's the key. More than, uh, you know, whether who's fit and what should be done franchise on. It's just a small percentage difference. Okay. Uh, Nandi, can I just comment regarding this uh, yes, ROI? Yes, you know, as far as the ROI is concerned, it's not only the return on the investment, but also a combination of the revenue versus the cost. How the owner, in case of franchise properties, is extracting from the brand what Anika and Amit just mentioned. Extraction means that extracting uh, all sort of revenue at the medium cost. So the cost of acquisition of business must be keeping in mind when you acquire a business. So brand has very, very uh, too many options in terms of the loyalty programs, in terms of the uh, uh, RFP processes, uh, direct businesses, which comes at a lower cost uh, than a business coming through the OTAs. But in case of a franchise, what we have seen is that owners generally rely more on the contribution from the OTAs uh, than the brand. They feel that the brand and they don't maintain the rate parity. So when you are not maintaining the rate parity, so you are leaving your revenues and your income on the table in the hands of the OTAs or the other distribution channels. So when it comes to the cost, optimization, I, I firmly believe not in cutting the cost, but I firmly believe a cost optimization. So cutting the cost is a very easy way to reduce your cost and making a profit. But at what cost? Sometimes you 
cut corners and then the property needs renovation and upgradation after a couple of years. Then you have to balance it out after a couple of years, whatever you earn in the earlier years. So I think it's a combination of both extracting uh, the maximum out of the revenue to the brand and optimization of your cost. Then you can derive the uh, right amount of ROI for your investment over a period of time. This is what I want to just add. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Balji, on a uh, positive note, uh, if you can share one successful case study of a franchise hotel owner in your uh, you know, chain, it will be good. And how you turn around from a existing, maybe a conversion story or a great value of you. Yeah, I'll give you an example of one uh, Regenta Central in Ahmedabad. Uh, here is where I said that the, uh, we were in discussion and um, and then the uh, owner decided to go it on his own. And then what happened was that he ran the hotel for a few months on his own. And he got back to us that, okay, I want a friend back. So we saw the hotel, hotel fantastic. All of them, but very, very nicely done. And owner, as I mentioned, he was studying abroad. So we signed up with him and he got an increment almost of 30% bump up in the revenue within the next two months. Then he realized that instead of a clutter of you know, so many brands and all that, how does this brand stand up? So, so and then the also support, he got 30, and we've said that we're giving almost 30 to 60% increase. Another uh, hotel which is doing very well is a hotel in Calcutta, uh, where again the owner is a, is a hotelier who was running the hotel for a long time. And uh, he has he, he got so many restaurants also, besides other businesses. So he thought that maybe it would be a good idea to go for a franchise. And when he went for a franchise, in fact, the last visit to Calcutta, I just went there because I don't get into pretty pretty of a daily figure. But I asked that general manager will be taking a round by how do you support from the from RSO and all that? So very good sir. We get uh, you know 25 to 30 percent of our business from Calcutta and uh, from Delhi and 25 to 30 percent business from Bombay office. So I was very pleased because I thought you know usually he'll complain. But then we be surprised. So that's been a case also. Ludhiana. Ludhiana is a case where you know revenue increased by 30 percent the more we took over. Um, it was a, uh, a Indian brand which was uh, running on a management contract and then they wanted to franchise us. So we took it on the franchise after that. And now, of course, they want to uh, give it to us for management. The last couple of days, we are running on a franchise. Uh, then, of course, in Kanpur, hugely successful. The, uh, he's so happy that a lot of business of his is Kanpur uh, uh, and all that. But he said, brand gives him, even the people said that, okay, where are you doing the wedding? Instead of doing an XYZ hotel, they are doing it with the sign in a Regenta hotel. So you get a little scatter when you are doing uh, even a banquet in a branded hotel than a non branded hotel. Even if it's solitaire or something like that, solitaire hotel or you know, any other thing, whatever it is there, if you're doing a branded hotel, you get a little scatter. Everybody wants to do his daughter's wedding or this in a branded hotel. So they get that spin off benefit also. I think uh, it's, it's working well for us. As I said today, we started off as owning Kapu. We went and we built all our infrastructure. Then we went into management where we could provide a lot of support to all our owners because we could afford it. Because management companies face a lot of problems. In the beginning, because they are not able to support, they need a critical mass. They need to have 30 40 hotels before they are able to afford all the marketing, sales, revenue, all the infrastructure they are able to afford. So, we were able to afford from the day one. And now we have gone into franchising. Of course, we offer the people franchise and management. And then, depending on our discussion with them, we take a decision what to offer. Thanks, Mr. Baji. Okay, gentlemen, we are and uh, Anika, we are in the last leg. So I would like to take uh, one final word of advice for uh, hotel owners who are looking for a conversion transaction under a franchise. What's your advice and what you can bring on the table in a one or two liners? Amit, we'll start with you. So uh, I think uh, uh, whoever has an existing asset, I think the most important thing is to understand that for brands, fire life safety is the, is the key. Uh, and for us, um, uh, 
uh, between NFPA and the uh, National Building Code uh, and the brand standard, we have to see whichever is the most stringent one. We have to follow that. So, uh, so that's one very particular important thing. Second important thing is also that every brand has got certain key elements and core elements that they need to have within the hotel. So they need to ensure that those experiences are there and can be created in your product for you to convert your hotel from an independent property into a into a branded hotel. Yeah. Thanks, Amit. Atul? I would just say that is the is the engagement, uh, trust, and expertise. When I say the engagement, owner should engage uh, with the brand, whether a franchise or a management, uh, in the beginning of the project, and so that they gain the uh, they get the expert advice. Uh, doing the project conception and inception and the development of the hotel and post the operation and engagement is most important generally what we have seen is that uh, engagement in a franchise properties is much less than in a management property and i would say that the all hotel operators they have expert team sitting in their office just to support all the hotel owners i think just rely on them and listen to them whatever their advices are and it's only for their own benefit Thank you. Mr. Balji? I would say that a couple of things are just out is the jurisdiction part of it. Foreign brand will normally have jurisdiction abroad, uh, which uh, sometimes can be very difficult for uh, a gig or uh, if the brand is not performing well, then it's very difficult to exit. And then there should be an exit clause also, which we provide. You know, we say if the guy is not very happy with us, then why does uh, you know, okay, we are not able to deliver, it's not that we should be able to deliver 100% of the cases. If some cases market is so bad that nobody is able to deliver, or the hotel is a bad location, there should be an exit clause, so which we provide. So jurisdiction and uh, exit is what we are doing. And also as far as, uh, you know, uh, the sales team is concerned, they don't know whether the hotel is franchised or is managed or is owned. They're not told. I don't know if this is a own hotel, therefore you favor this hotel. Typically in Pune, we have one owned hotel and one hotel which is managed. So this is a question which is asked by the owner at that time, that who will first fill up your hotel? I say we look like fools in front of our staff. We tell that people, our sales team, that no, 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 pele is to go. And then you do this. No, this doesn't happen. We are a professional organization. We have to also behave professionally. Then tell them that this is all our hotel. And yes, we position the hotels a little different. One is a notch four, and one is a notch higher, Royal Office Suites, and one is Royal Office Central in Pune. And both are today now have a common sales team, actually. And they are doing rocky. Today the business is over 90%, uh, you know, for both the hotels. But I think sometimes this works to our favor also. Thank you, Mr. Pachi. 30 seconds I have, but with the piece. Okay. okay. To advise the owner who's looking at conversion. For me, uh, Nandi, if I have to advise an owner who's looking at franchisee or conversion, the first thing that I'll say is define his why. See, all of us, brands, we bring substantial value in terms of distribution, a lot of other sports that we have inherited after 40, 50 years of experience. He, he has an opportunity to tap on the system to his advantage and get benefit out of it. So his Thank research you. and why. So, uh, Nandi, for me, uh, the decision from the owner should be from the perspective whether he wants a higher degree of control. Does he want to let go of his bank account? Does he want to let go of having the authority to appoint his own people? Or does he want uh, to keep that control with himself? Does he want to be somewhere on the right spectrum of getting professional international advice and at the same time, being uh, the master of his own destiny in terms of controlling his asset. So that's what will govern whether he wants to brand in itself or whether he wants to brand through management contract or franchise. It is a decision that has to come from his house of uh, uh, you know, branding or his house of ownership on what exactly he wants. You know, That should drive the branding. Thanks, Anika. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a wonderful uh, discussion with all of you. I'm, I'm sure our audience, especially the hotel owners, the industry professionals, have taken up some good insights from all of you. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Thank